Well, thank you very much, Brother Richard, and uh, also Brother Ray for your help in the uh, presentation. And we send our uh, love and greeting to all the brethren on happy to be with you all. Uh, we do indeed, as was mentioned in the brief fellowship, uh, we're missing each other in, uh, in person. Um, my wife, Sister Melinda, sends her love, and uh, my mum, Sister Margaret, sends her love, and we remember you all. We uh, also have uh, greetings from Sister Margaret Hanley, who, Lord willing, will join later in the day with uh, the Bible study. And um, uh, just 12 months ago, we were meeting with Brother Len and Sister Gretchen Grice, and we're in our home. and. And it's uh, it's a lot has happened in uh, in the last twelve months, but uh, with the Lord's help, um, we will endure and be faithful. The subject of our thoughts is among men. The tabernacle of God is among men, is found in the Book of Revelation, chapter twenty-one and verse three. The revelation was by John the Apostle as it was heard and seen by him. He received it from an angel that Jesus had sent to testify and instruct. We are indeed privileged to have access to the plans and purposes of God in his word and we can trust in our studies as it states in Revelation 22 and verse 6. And he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits and the prophets, sent his angel to show his bond servants the things which must soon take place. So studies of Revelation have blessed the reader as is promised and been of instruction for each to heed to God's word for the time is near. With this in mind, let's look at this subject of the tabernacle of God shall be with men. And reading Revelation chapter 5, take in the further context. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice on, from the throne saying, the of God is among men, and he will dwell among them. And they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. The passage by John reveals many beautiful truths of God's word, and it is descriptive for a time future from John's time and from our time, and it expresses a vivid, and favoured prophetic view of a new heaven and a new earth. Within it, John sees the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and likens it to the grandeur of a bride splendidly adorned. The illustration is then announced from the throne that God's tabernacle is with men resulting in many blessings and conditions that will be the mark of the new heavens and new earth. The Apostle John was given revelations to make known the mysteries of God. We may consider the words also of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 4 to 11 that speak of the mystery of the church which for ages was hidden in God. And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, 
which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed to his holy prophets, holy apostles and prophets in the spirit, to be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which I according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose, which he Christ Jesus, our Lord. His plan in Christ Jesus, in consideration of our topic in Revelation 21, hold the tabernacle of God is with men. We can see the harmony in the scriptures to the application for its time period. Looking to the past, the world that was, the present, in the present heavens and earth, and the future, the new heavens and the new earth. And we read from the words of the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter 3 and 5, 6 and 7 and verse 13. For when they maintain this, by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly men. We are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. The Apostle Peter stirs up one remembrance in reading 2 Peter 3 and verse 2. So that you should remember, spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Saviour's apostles like revelation that we cross-reference words and subjects previously spoken and events that may exist through the earlier times in the Old Testament. And now with the prophetic study and the careful watching of God's fulfilling prophecies right down to our days, indeed the days we are living in now, God grows richer and richer. The word of God will decide when a prophecy is fulfilled. And we as need to follow the master's instruction to watch and pray, searching, seeking and calling upon him. The tabernacle is an illustration that we can draw upon many examples and instances of the meaning of tabernacle is a tent or booths, a cloth hut, and as a dwelling, and it is also referred as the tent of meeting, where the people were called to meet God. In Vine's dictionary, it is helpful in explaining a link between tabernacle and dwelling, and the group is skene, and closely to this Greek word for dwell is skenu. It is a simple phrase as to pitch a tent. When we think today of our own earthly dwelling places, our house or abode, a material dwelling place that we literally settle down in, the experience race, a habitation, it's providing the security, a comfort, perhaps a sanctuary, a place of peace. 
and a temporal provision for family and our first earthly needs. And indeed this weekend, a place for an online convention. However, we can look back to see where the importance of the tabernacle is in the scripture. But first, we may consider how God has dwelled with the earthly creation and man, starting in Genesis 1 and verse 2. It tells us there, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over this. God's Spirit moved or hovered over the surface. The creation of God's power and that of the Logos with Yahweh. That is Jehovah and the Word. It was through his first creation, the Logos, that he made it. Man's earliest dwelling or abode was in Eden. In Genesis 7 to 9. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a lean. The Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Our cause to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The fall of man through disobedience and the resultant curse and the wages for sin caused pain, sorrow and death and a long separation of man from God. Genesis chapter 3 and 23 and 24. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. And so he drove the man out and at the east of the garden, the cherubim and the flaming sword, which, which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. The corruption again of mankind by the fallen angelic influence and the world that was would be destroyed by water. We see this in Genesis chapter 6 and 3 and 5 and 6. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. And when the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. Thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Except for Noah, we see in Genesis 6, 8 and 9 reads, but Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man and blameless in his time, and Noah walked with God. And so we remember this event marked the passing away of that evil order, the world that was, that Peter refers to. We recall the further events where God intervened the early peoples of earth that became self-reliant. And God dispersed them in Genesis 11, 8 and 9. The Lord from there over the face of the whole earth and they stopped building the city. And therefore its name was called. There the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. We travel further through scripture to the events in Exodus that tell us in detail how God dealt with his covenanted people, Israel. And God took notice to them and so to the afflictions, as it says in Exodus chapter 3 and 5 to 7, Moses. 
And then he said, here, remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said also, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their task, for I am aware of their suffering. The entire passage here gives a hope of deliverance and instructs that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that is Jehovah, would certainly be with Moses. And the sons of Israel lived in Egypt 430 years. And at the mighty hand of Jehovah God were eventually released to the wilderness where they were instructed while living in tents to follow Moses. And God gave them the Ten Commandments and the ordinances to subject them to himself. In Exodus uh, chapter 25 and 8 and 9, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them according to all that I am going to show you as that and of all its furnitures, just so you shall construct it. The tabernacle became an area for assembly for the sacrificial worship. It was a dwelling place, a meeting place, and a holy sanctuary, and it was termed the house of God. And for example, yeah, we see in part in Exodus 23 and verse 19. And you shall bring the choice first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. We read in Exodus 3 and 43 that the people finished the work of making all the materials as the Lord commanded Moses. And so the sons of Israel did all the work to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. And Moses examined all the work, and behold, they had done it. Just as the Lord had commanded, this they had done. And so Moses blessed them. Also, reading in 1 Chronicles 8 and 49, it tells us this. And their kinsmen, the Levites, were appointed for all the services of the tabernacle of the house of God. But Aaron and his sons offered on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense for all the work of the most holy place and to make atonement for Israel according to all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. Exodus 32, 29 and 30 gives information that Moses was seeking an atoning for sin. Moses said, dedicate yourselves today to the Lord, for every man has been against his son and against his brother, in order that he may bestow a blessing upon you today. On the next day, Moses said to the people, you yourselves... I'm going up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Remember, this was the time of the golden calf. The Lord saw that the people were an obstinate people and the tabernacle's many features and services were to be performed. The tabernacle in the wilderness is indeed a complete number of studies on their own. For instance, the building material and design, the holy instruments, the consecration of the priests, the garments, the offerings, and many further ordinances that God instructed, and indeed can be a blessing to study these topics. The Lord's dealings are mentioned in Exodus 34, 6, and 7. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, Compassed, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving and kindness, who forgives iniquity and transgression and sin, 
yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. And in his purpose was to tabernacle with his covenanted people, Israel, as in Exodus 20 through to 46. And I will meet there, and it shall be consecrated by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. I will also consecrate Aaron and his sons to minister as priests. And I will dwell among the sons of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. And how these words are very similar to the words of our Revelation chapter 21 passage. For God dealt with Israel alone, and they were a witness to the nations around about. For the nations outside of the camp of Israel served other gods, and they were instructed to keep unstained all the heathen nations that were around them, which commemorated and continue to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles or Booths, remembering the nomadic living with tents and the tabernacle in the wilderness. Let's now move on to some of the words of Stephen, a man full of faith and wisdom, chosen of one of the seven by the apostles. It is facts and chapter 7. The men of the synagogue rose up and argued with Stephen against him. We, we recall Stephen's defence being full of truths before the high priest in the council, and we read this in Acts chapter 7 and 44 through to 50. Our fathers had the tabernacle of testimony in the wilderness. Choke to Mo directed him to make it according to the pattern which he had seen. And having received it in their turn, our fathers brought it in with Joshua in the nations whom God drove out before our fathers until the time of David and David found favor in God's sight and asked that he, he might find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob but it was Solomon who built a house for him however the most high does not dwell in houses made by human hands as the prophet says heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool of my feet what kind of house will you build for me? Says, what place is there for my repose? Was it not my hand which made all these things? So we see that after the temporary tabernacle in the wilderness, there was a period of the kings in which the temple was constructed under King David's son, King Solomon. A number of accounts show the work that was involved in the temple in Jerusalem. We will just read uh, a few passages from starting 1 Kings chapter 5 and 1 to 5. And now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon. When he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram had always been a friend of David. And then Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying, You know that David, my father, was under the Lord, his God, because of the wars which surrounded him, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. Behold, I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord, as the Lord spoke to David my father, saying, Your son, whom I will set on the throne in your place, he will build the house for my name. The temple was a sacred place for the nation to praise and worship God. The workmanship, the mastery, the design, 
the skilled people and resources that were involved was immense. And 1 Kings 5 and verse 17 tells us of a time of peace and the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he had promised. Then the king commanded and they quarried great stones, costly stones, to lay the foundation of the house with cut stones. There was the various parts of Solomon te Solomon's temple that we read, a reference to the Acris King 6 and verse 7. The house, while it was being built, was built of stone prepared at the quarry, and there was neither hammer nor axe nor any iron tool heard in the house while it was being built. Indeed, we see an illustration of this in the church development. King Solomon, all in a sanctuary and with pure gold, and he brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. The project was complete in seven years. And then Solomon addressed the whole assembly with prayers and blessings and praises to God. So now we have touched on the wilderness tabernacle and the temple in Solomon's day. We might ask, how does this relation passage, whereby it occurs in a new heaven and a new earth? It is, of course, meaningful for us to study Hebrews to see the deep significance of the law given unto Moses as in Hebrews 8, 1, 2, and verse 5. Now, the main point in what has been said is this. We have such a high priest who seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, not man verse 5 who served heavenly things Jesus was God when he was about to erect the tabernacle for C he says to the pattern which was shown you for through the patriarchs the prophets the judges and the kings God made arrangements for the nation of Israel, and they were lessons to lead to God through a promised Messiah. For God purposed someone greater and higher, a high priest, combining for the forgiveness of sin and instruction for the people, and that was Jesus Christ. Also have this kingly function of dominion and power, for it has been granted his kingdom in the new heavens and the new earth. Dwelling and its meaning. One shall spread his tabernacle or a tent. He did visit us and 14 and, the, and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. The visitation of our Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God, was a fulfilling of prophecy. And in the remaining time, the new heavens and the new earth, for it will be established, will be as a sanctuary with men. We might ask, how could this be accomplished? It will be through the new heavenly arrangement termed the holy city, New Jerusalem. This city is illumined by the glory of God and its lamp is the the brilliance of the city is described in great details in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 
verses 11 through to the end of the chapter. We are told that the holy city ready and came out of heaven from God likened to a bride adorned for her husband. The beauty of the bride adorned for her husband is the readiness, the completeness. It is the performance as from a completed preparedness. The spiritual blessings will be of God and for man. As I said, 21 and verse 4, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no longer any death, longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. The vision also explains in Revelation 21 and 7 that the bride is the wife of the lamb. Surely here, representing the church of Christ, the living stones, a holy nation, the elect, the overcomers, the new creation, all these terms, and indeed who follow the lamb, where that is the faithful ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. And they will be united in the heavenly and be rewarded with the marriage of the revelation speaks of the lamb with 144,000 who were purchased from the earth. With woman, for they are celibate, and wherever he goes, these have been purchased from mankind as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. God has purposed a thousand years for the new earth to be restored to perfection. Period of time whereby Satan, the proud his spirit and blessings with the church, the great multitude, it will be leading the new earthly order through the king. Prophet Isaiah could foretell the long prom promised kingdom and the restitution of all things. We find the similar language to our topic in Isaiah 61 and 10 and 11. And I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God. For he with garments of salvation, he has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness, as a bride with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as the garden causes the things sown in it to spring up so the lord god will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations also reading isaiah 62 2 and 3 the nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory and you will be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord will designate and you will also be a crown of beauty in the hand of your God. Characteristics of when God's tabernacle shall be with all men is indeed the removal of fear and pain. But the world indeed which we live in today, former things will have passed away. The resurrection of mankind will have taken place. Any baggage in the new earth will have to unpack it and obey Jesus and his rule. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men for salvation. Indeed, wars will have all been put aside and ended. When will this be? It will be after the completion of the shaking of the present heavens and earth. It will be after the church is complete 
with the faithful overcomers of this gospel age. It will be after the Lord God will come about against Gog, nation of Israel. We find this prophecy in 38 and 39. Here, the nation of Israel will look on the one whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him. For the release from the old order, the final birth pains established kingdom of Christ. As it says in Isaiah 51 and verse 11, so the ransomed of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion. And everlasting joy will be on their heads, and they will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. It will be a time of peace and not division. And man will cleave to God, removing any schisms. The Lord God will reveal his glory as a canopy, as and refuge. For healing. The essence of the tabernacle of God is that he will bring it into place in his own time and for his ways are higher than our ways. The new heavens will include the glorified complete church along with the great multitude before the throne and with the angelic hosts of heaven. It will bring blessings to mankind through the earthly representatives the faithful ones of old that were worthy or approved. It will be this arrangement that will tabernacle with men for the great sin eradication program. In summary, we have touched on the world that was, the world that is now and is to come, touched on the Garden of Eden, Adam, Noah, and the Tower of Babel. We've touched on Moses and Israel in the wilderness, as well as the Temple of Solomon. And indeed, the temple made without hands. And we notice that all these events, all these arrangements, are through divine intervention. The tabernacle is a meeting place for God and men, and it is where God will take away every tear, death, mourning, and pain, for this will be all passed away. Through the study of the word of God, we learned Christ is central to all of God's plan. The new rule and blessings will flow to all the families of the earth when the tabernacle of God is with men. Oh, what a prospect. Dear brethren, that we have our loving Heavenly Father and to be with our Lord Jesus. Amen.